Hello and welcome to episode 66 of Stitched in Sweden. I'm Maria and you can find me on Ravelry as mmonska and on Instagram as Stitched in Sweden. This week I have quite a bit of sewing to share with you and uh, a few knitting finished projects and uh, one that I'm still working on. So let's just jump right in with this week in Stockholm. It's been a little while since the last time I recorded. Uh, things have been crazy with um, finishing my thesis up and um, I haven't actually started working full-time. I'm still working 80% right now, but I will be working full-time as of next week or in two weeks, I guess, after next week. And in the meantime, I have been doing lots of wedding planning and a lot of, of my projects that I'm going to share with you today are sort of wedding related. Not sort of wedding related, definitely wedding related. Not only my wedding, but uh, one of my friend's weddings, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but basically, summer is in full swing here, which is really nice, and that means that it's about, on average, I would say, 20 degrees Celsius, which I think, if I remember, is around... No, I don't know. I think it's probably around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and it's mostly sunny, and that's lovely, and I've been biking to work again. I mean, I've still been biking to work all the time, but now I have less layers on, and it's just nice to be, um, yeah, warmer in general. So anyway, um, yeah, this week we are um, actually getting ready to go up to mid to northern Sweden. I call it the north, but it's not really actually the north. It's just really far north from here. Uh, it's about an eight hour train ride north of here to a, um, it's actually a ski resort called Ora, and Thomas's family has a small cabin outside of the town, and they often go up there in the winter. We went up there for Easter, and usually it's, yeah, a lot of skiing and stuff like that, but it's also nice to go there in the summer because there's lots of hiking and, um, yeah, it's pretty and nice up there. So we'll be going up there for a week. I just looked at the weather this morning and it's supposed to be 10 degrees, which is closer to 50, 45, so it's going to be cold and rainy. But, uh, yeah. I think I need to bring some think of some projects to bring with me, and I feel like I have so many projects going right now, but most of them involve being next to my sewing machine, which is not going to be coming with me on the train, so I don't know if I want to start something else, but uh, I'll have to have to think about that. But let's start out with uh, some knitting and what I have finished. Um, the biggest project, I guess, that I finished is my Find Your Fade shawl, and this has been finished for quite a while now, but I haven't shown it to you. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I have not blocked it yet, mostly because, again, I've just been doing so much sewing and fabric cutting and all of that, and in our apartment we have this room that I'm sitting in right now, which is kind of our living room area, and that's where my desk is, that has my sewing machine on it, pretty much set up all the time. Uh, and I usually, I have a little space on my desk here that I can cut some things if they're smaller pieces, like I can cut um, bodices and some shirts and stuff like that. But for larger things, I move some furniture in the rest of the living room and usually cut on the floor. So that's also my blocking space. So it's been, yeah, kind of, I don't know, I've just put blocking on hold while I have all these sewing projects going because blocking takes a couple of days to dry or just... It just takes up all the space in the living room, so it doesn't make it that easy to move around. But anyway, 
that's all to say that this isn't blocked yet, but it is still a nice big cozy shawl and I'm so happy that it's finished. Um, and it's just massive. So I think for the final time I will go through and tell you what yarns I used and just so you can know. Um, I don't have them all exactly, but just to give you an idea. This first one is a merino nylon cashmere yarn from the wool barn and I think it's called something like Antique Rose or something and it's super soft and it has a nice little halo on it and I really like that yarn. I used this also for a pair of um, socks that I knit and also for, if you remember the little bunnies that I made, one of them had a little pink dress and that was this yarn too. Then I have the next color which is a yarn, a merino yarn from Gregoria Fibers and this was, yeah, just a, a really nice yarn to knit with and I was really pleased with how it transitioned from the first one into the second one. Then I have um, this cream color with pink and sort of black specks as well. And that was a yarn from Frida Fuchs. And that transitions into a yarn that has a little bit more yellow to it um, and some more pinks, which was from also from Gregoria Fibers. And this more greenish blue one is also from Gregoria Fibers. I had three of hers. Um, the only three yarns I've ever had from her are in this uh, shop. And then this more speckly one here is from Hey Sister Yarn Co. And um, that is Can't Take the Sky from Me. And then I have this lovely edging yarn, which is a super squishy and just lovely um, yarn from Studio Mez. And this is one, one of the ones I have a tag for. Uh, and this is a one-of-a-kind fingering four-ply superwash merino nylon. And that one's really nice and plump and just worked out perfectly with the fade. And I got that one from my friends. And it just, she thought that it would be the perfect match, and it was. So, yay, the fade is finished. And... I imagine it will grow a little bit after I block it, but hopefully not too much because it's already massive. I'm not planning on like pinning it out really, um, but I think that I will probably have it somehow like this. And I may even just like tie this kind of um, and have this kind of on top or just, I don't know how these little strings will be. But basically, this is a huge shawl, and it's really cozy, and it was fun to work on. And we've just had it on the couch, mostly. Um, it works very well as a blanket, as well as a shawl. But I, yeah, I haven't worn it that much. I mean, I haven't worn it as a shawl, actually, except for, yeah, wrapped around me, sort of, in the house, if I've been cold. But I haven't worn it out, because it's not that cold here. And also, I need to block it. But that will happen eventually, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. The second project that I um, finished is my Thalia, Talia, I don't know how you say it, that one, from Andrea Renee Nitz, Andrea Mowry. Uh, the Finder Fade was also by Andrea Mowry, probably know that. This is my Thalia. And I really like how this turned out. Um, this one is blocked, and I knit it in uh, Quince & Co. in the Boreal color, Quince & Co. Chickadee. And it is quite large, but still nice and it's like not too dense, and uh, it feels really nice to have on, and I'm sure it will be a really nice shawl to have in the winter when it's cold. Um, and I really like the little tassels, even though at first when I saw this pattern I didn't think that I would have the tassels. 
I'm really happy that I put them on. Um, yeah, so this shawl was in the pattern. She also used Quince & Co. Chickadee and she suggested to use a 3.5 millimeter needle which is something like a US 4 approximately, I don't know exactly. And I ended up using a 5 millimeter needle which is like a US 8. So that's kind of crazy. Um, but that was just how I liked, I, I don't know, I just liked this shawl with a little bit more drape to it and a little bit uh, looser fabric, just like not so dense. And you can sort of see through a little bit slightly if I like pull my fingers out like that, but it's just, it has a nice drape to it and I think it works really well. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, it has just this nice chevron pattern and then it has these cool kind of textured stitches um, within the chevron and then also at this bottom part and then you have the arrows along the edge and I used Hey Sister uh, Yarn Co. Um, Snuggle Worsted in the Leaf on the Wind color for my edging and my tassels and it just has subtle speckles in it and the speckles um, match nicely with my color of my yarn, so I thought they worked well. Uh, I used the Icelandic bind off for this, which is also what I used in my Find Your Fade, and that is my favorite bind off to use for garter stitch um, when you need a stretchy edge, or even, I mean, it's a stretchy but firm edge, I would say, if that makes sense. Um, it doesn't, like, stretch forever, but it it also doesn't stretch out of place, so it doesn't leave you with these kind of wavy edges that sometimes happen. Um, sometimes I use the Jenny Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off, but I find that I just prefer this one, the Icelandic bind off, especially for garter stitch because I just think it gives a really nice edge, it matches the garter stitch really well, and it's even, like it's it's flat, it doesn't it doesn't make this like lettuce edge that sometimes happens with the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy. And I know um I've tried doing the surprisingly stretchy bind off a couple of different ways. Uh it seems a little counterintuitive, but if you do the surprisingly stretchy bind off tightly, it works better than if you try to do the stretchy bind off and are extra loose with it, if that makes sense. But yeah, I just prefer the Icelandic bind off for garter stitch, so that's what I use for both of those shells. Okay, and now the project that I am working on currently is with my leftovers from the Find Your Fade shawl. I decided to make a uh, pint size so faded sweater and this is kind of a disaster right now because it has a lot of ends to weave in and I'm in the middle of changing colors so whatever. Here is the little sweater and um, it has all of the yarns from my Find Your Fade. It's going to have a little ripped collar here um, and it has little ribbed cuffs, and here I didn't follow the pattern exactly because in terms of like the transitioning of colors, um, I ran out of a few. In my Find Your Fade, the uh, this color here from Gregoria Fibers, this kind of middle one, I think it was a plumper yarn, so it had a little bit less yardage to begin with, and I really had hardly any of that one left, so I was only able to do a few stripes um, in the so faded sweater, and so it didn't really fade, but it, it does kind of work, I think. Um, otherwise, I have... It was a good way to use a good part of the leftovers for the rest of what I had. Um, so I still need to do kind of like the blue colors of the sleeve, the second sleeve, but this is pretty much what I have left of the other colors. So 
it really, I don't know, it works to use up a bit more. And I'm making a, um, the size 4, the children's size 4, toddler size, I don't know. For the, I just remembered that for the, um, Thalia, I don't know, that one, um, I used four full skeins of Quince and Co. Chickadee and I broke into a fifth one for just a couple of rows at the end. But I still have a few skeins left so I think it would be nice to make a cozy winter hat maybe with a, I don't know, maybe with some of the uh, Hey Sister Young Co in it as well, like maybe with one of those as a pom-pom, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But that is basically what I've been knitting. I had some of those projects going on sort of parallel with the projects I'm sewing. It works really well to have, for me to have kind of one sewing project at a time and then one knitting project at a time so that I can, when I have um, alone time or when I have when Thomas is doing something else, um, I can be sewing, and then if he's home and it's in the evening and we're watching a movie or something like that, then I can be knitting on the couch with him. So right now I just will be finishing up the little sweater soon, I think, and I'm kind of ready to start something else, but I don't know what that's going to be, also because I'm feeling slightly overwhelmed by the amount of other projects that I have going for sewing and um, yeah but even though I even though I have sorry I'm touching my hair it's driving me crazy because it's getting long but I'm trying to let it grow out a little bit and it's driving me crazy um, even though I have so many projects that I am working on or planning for sewing right now um, I still like to have a knitting project because I end up feeling like I'm wasting time if I'm sitting in front of a movie and not doing anything. So I'd rather have an additional knitting project going so that I can be working on that um, Yeah, if I'm watching TV. Anyway. Okay, so now a bit of sewing. There's a lot of it, so get ready. Uh, the I guess the first thing, or the oldest thing, oldest, but whatever, the thing that I made first, or that's been finished the longest, is the ties for the wedding, and here is one of them. I have made five ties, full men's size, adult men size ties, and uh, this is one of them. The other ones are hanging up, and I just didn't want to deal with them all, so... Um, these are almost all finished. I need to just add the little strap here, um, which is going to be in the same fabric as this, to the back. But um, these are finished. So I think I should probably have Thomas like try them on and tie it and make sure it's going to be like pretty good. Otherwise, we're going to have to come up with a backup solution. But um, here they are. They're a really light pink, 100% silk fabric, and they have a little bit of Liberty of London um, fabric for the lining, which I think is just a nice little touch. So yeah, like I said, I made five of those, and I actually need to make one more um, mini-sized one for the ring bear, so that also needs to happen at some point. I finished two little dresses, well they're all really almost finished, two little dresses for the um, flower girls. You have Thomas's uh, niece, who will be two and a half at the wedding, and uh, my cousin who is eight. Um, and this is the for the two and a half year old, and this one is for the eight year old. And I'll just talk you through a little bit with the smaller one since it's easier to fit in the frame. But I used a pattern called the Janie dress, and this is by Mel.
Mouse House Creations, I think. Um, you can find it by Googling easily, I think. Janie with J-A-N-I-E. And I used some fabric from Stoff Oak Steel, which is a... I don't know if it's Swedish. I think it's not. But I know they have it in Sweden, Norway, Germany, and the UK. And Denmark, maybe. Um, but I basically used a off-white sort of ivory um, jersey fabric for the main dress part. And then I put a um, stretch lace, also in an ivory sort of off-white color, over. And I made um, a full circle skirt for these dresses because I think they have nice twirl potential and the little girls will really enjoy that. Um, but basically, yeah, it was really simple and quick to make. I made both of them in an afternoon. I think it took like maybe three hours or something to make them. Uh, I haven't done anything with the bottom hem yet and I don't know if I'm going to. I might just um, even it out a little bit and just cut it because it's not going to unravel or anything since it's jersey. And yeah, I don't really want to hem it. <laughs> I don't know. I think it looks fine as it is and yeah. I don't know how often they would are going to wear these. So I did have one little uh, snafu, I guess you could say, which is that when I finished the this smaller one, um, which I think I ended up making size 3 or somewhere between the 2 and the 3, I don't remember. I looked at the head hole and I was just thinking there is absolutely no way that her head is going to fit through this. So after I had finished off the head hole, I realized that I need to do something. So I cut a little keyhole out and I'm going to attach a button on here um, to close that up. And then I just made some bias tape, which sort of worked, but you can see that it's a little bit wrinkly, which is kind of disappointing, but, like, I don't know, I can't deal with it. So that is what it is. And then just to make the match, and just in case this head hole was also too small, I decided to do it for the large size one as well. But yeah, I think they're going to be really pretty, and it was a really easy pattern, and I definitely recommend it. I think it's, you could make lots of just, I mean, these ones look a little bit fancier because they're with lace and they're white, but um, you can just make nice little summer dresses. I think they would probably be really comfortable because they're jersey. So, yes. Um, what else? Okay, so those are kind of my finished sewing projects that I have this week. Uh, I do have some things that are in progress. The biggest project that I have going right now actually is not for myself. Um, I guess these projects weren't for myself either, but it's not even for my wedding. Uh, one of my friends is getting married in the middle of August, I think August 19th. and. She, about a month ago, yeah, about a month ago, uh, was still having a really hard time finding a dress that she was going to have for her wedding. And I sort of mentioned to her, it was around, actually around the beginning of June, because it was right around my birthday, and I said to her, you know, if you really can't find anything, well, first I asked her, like, what was she looking for? Because I've also looked at wedding dresses recently, so I sort of knew what was out there a little bit. I mean, we don't know everything that's out there, but we're both looking in the same city for wedding dress, so I had a feeling of the kind of dresses that I had seen. So I thought, I'll just start by asking her what she's looking for. And she was looking for a silk or satin, sort of shiny, glossy, I don't know, not glossy, but not matte, shiny, full skirt, floor length, or skirt-like dress, 
um, the bottom half being satin with a lace top over some sort of um, strapless corset type bodice. And she said she had seen parts of this dress in different dresses, so maybe she liked the top of one dress but not the bottom, and she liked the bottom of one dress but not the top. So I pulled up a couple of pictures on Pinterest and asked her, you know, it's like, are you kind of thinking like this is what you're looking for? Um, she's like, yeah, that is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. I'm like, okay, you have to, you would have to decide like this week, but if you really need me to, or if you really want me to, I can make you your dress for you as a skirt and a top. And she kind of was like, oh, really? Could you do that? Like, is that something that you can do? And so, yeah, I said, yeah, it wouldn't be that hard, like, if this is the kind of thing that you're looking for, and we could, you know, talk about it and go fabric shopping together and stuff like that, and I think we can make it work. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm making her wedding dress. And it's going to be... It is slow. It's this pile right here. I'll show it to you in a minute. Uh, it's not finished yet, but the skirt part is almost finished. I just need the buttons and um, also to do the hem, which is 14 meters of hem. <laughs> but luckily I figured out recently how to do the rolled hem on my machine, which is what I'm going to do. Um, it's two skirts, so there's an underskirt and an overskirt. and. That's why it's 14 meters, but still so long. Um, but we need, she needs to come here with, once we have the buttons on and everything, and everything's exactly how it's going to be so that I can measure the hem and do that. Um, so, yeah, I'll just show you the skirt. I'm going to have to move my chair a little bit. So, here it is. But... Um, I basically, I've learned a lot actually making this skirt, and uh, I've gotten to use some sort of techniques which I, I don't use on a daily basis, I guess, or just like in regular sewing as much. Um, it's a little bit awkward to hold because there's like so much fabric, and right now it's a bit on the wrinkly side, but it will be, you know, perfectly pressed and everything. Um, but here it is, and so it's going to be a sort of high-waisted skirt, which will, um, yeah, be like basically right under her bust. She's quite a bit shorter than I am, and just like small, she's very petite. Um, so it will be right under her bust, and it's a full circle skirt also, so if I pull out the side here, you know, it's... Out here and on my other side it would be the same. Ooh. Basically, full circle skirt. And it's in a 100% silk fabric which is just beautiful and flowy and lovely. And then it has a um, an underskirt which is in a nice lightweight cotton to kind of give it a little bit of structure, also to make it not see-through and just to be a nice underlayer. It has pockets. So here's one of them. There's one on the other side too. And yeah, I don't know. The back is one of the things that I would say I'm quite proud of. Um, there will be six little silk covered buttons that will be in the fabric, the same fabric as the skirt. Um, we're getting those made right now. They'll be right here, so this will button up. And on the top there will also be buttons, so it will kind of um, tie in the top and bottom together. Um, the zipper, this is a technique that I read about on the Grainline Studio, I think Grainline Studio is called, blog. And because this is like a really silky flowy outer fabric, they suggested not connecting it to the zipper, so only the cotton fabric is attached to the zipper. But when it's on, it 
really sits nicely so this is all closed up this will be all closed up and then you hardly notice that there's an open seam there um, just lays flat basically it's not not perfectly pressed right now but um, it will be when I'm finished so that was nice I used the rolled hem here so you have just this really beautiful edge um, I'm really happy with it, how it turned out. So that is the skirt and we had a really fun time at the fabric store picking out that silk because we um, were being helped by a man who was probably in his 80s or 90s um, who was telling us about how this was his best job ever and uh, he had been working there for 55 years and he just was very knowledgeable and very helpful so that was pleasant and entertaining. The top will be this, I'm kind of, it's in progress right now. Um, it's basically just going to be a lace bodice that like she puts her arms in like this and I'll just sort of put it on a little bit. It will be totally fit. Okay, no, it's, it's like really funny because I have it over my clothes, but you can get the idea that it will be fitted. I have um, a dart here and one here, but her boobs are higher than mine. <laughs> or just, yeah, it's fit for her, not me. Um, even though we are some sort of a similar size, I guess. So this will be the bodice, and she will have a, um, yeah, like I said, a strapless um, sort of sweetheart shape under garment uh, under this and then it will um, button up the back with the same silk covered buttons so yeah that's the back and it's going to be a high back and then the neckline will be edged with this um, satin bias tape that will be half this size, so it will be like that. She didn't want the lace edge on the um, neck part, but it's going to have little cap sleeves and those will have the lace edge, like the edging from the lace, if you know what I mean. Um, I've cut out some of it here. This is the lace edge from the fabric, and I'm also going to put this on the bottom of the top. Here. Um, even though the shirt will be tucked in, I figure it's just a nice way to finish it off by having this lace edge, this scalloped edge on the bottom. Uh, so that's what that's for. But I'm gonna go today, meet her at work to um, have her try it on so that I can start really putting it together and making sure, because now I'm at a point where if I need to make any more fitting adjustments that I want to make them now, because I'm also going to be doing some lace applique um, on the bodice part. Basically because, yeah, well for the for the part that's like, if you could imagine she's wearing this like sort of strapless heart, sweetheart shape bodice, like where your bra would be. From there down, she wants it to be a little bit more covered, so I'm going to sort of patch the lace on there and stitch it on. And I don't want to do all that work before I make sure that it's really fitted correctly, so that's what I'm going to check today. And then the part that's her skin, so it will be like from here to here, and then um, yeah, the sleeves will be her skin too. It will be just one layer of the lace and then the little cap sleeve. So. I think it's going to be really pretty. I get to use this really fun um, buttonhole uh, ribbon, or I don't know. I also use that on, that's how I did the the back of the skirt here with the buttonholes. I don't think you can see that. Can you see that? But it's just really fun uh, and satisfying. So that is the main project that I have been working on and it was five meters of silk and five meters of the underskirt fabric too 
which took up my whole entire living room and I was really scared to cut it but it went fine and uh, yeah. it's just expensive fabric and you know you want it to be really good because it's her wedding and um, yeah, it's going to be great though. So I have a bit of work to do on that but I think after today I'll have a little more idea of if the top is perfect. That was kind of a new um, process for me to uh, having her come over and I had cut out um, the bodice for the Moneta dress from Colette Patterns and I know that that is a, it's a fabric, a, it's a jersey dress so it's out of stretch fabric and this lace has a little bit of give to it but it's not stretchy so it's it wouldn't work really as just the Moneta bodice, like I knew we would have to adjust from there, but she had tried on my Moneta dress and I saw that the shoulders fit her well and it looked like it was going to be a good starting point. So I cut out the Moneta in a little bit bigger size than I normally would and I made the side seams straight down rather than the curve in in the jersey dress in the Moneta pattern. And I made it in just like a muslin fabric. And then I sewed the shoulder seams. And then while she was here and had her bodice, the uh, corset type thing on, I pinned the whole thing to her, um, including like pinning out the bust darts and then some darts below the bust and on the back as well. And then this is what I came up with. This is like after I. After I pinned the whole thing on her, I sort of drew some key lines with a pen and then I cut it up the back actually so I could cut it off of her um, where the button buttons will be. And then I transferred all the markings onto um, this tracing paper stuff. And this is basically the bodice pattern that I came up with. And I'm, I decided to make it a whole bodice rather than oftentimes you have this half and then it's like cut on the fold. But with the lace I wanted to be able to place the lace exactly how I wanted it to be and see really how it was going to be. So then you can also see sort of I've drawn in where the, approximately where the um, under top is so that I know where I'm going to be placing more lace. So hopefully it should be fitted perfectly to her, but it's always, of course, a little bit different when you go from the muslin fabric to the final fabric, so I just want to make sure and make any changes that I need to um, now. So exciting, exciting, lots of work, um, and she's, so today is July 13th, and she is leaving on... August 11th for her wedding and she wants to take it with her and we're going to be gone now for a week more than I mean like from Saturday to Sunday um so I won't be able to work on it then unless I decide that I'm going to hand stitch on these uh lace pieces and then I could bring it with me but I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that yet so yeah I have a little bit of my dress here <laughs> um this is the bottom part um, of one of the layers of my dress and this is the part that was cut off um, because yeah, I'm not supermodel height and I'm probably going to be using this to make um, a, yeah, a band for myself and I'm going to probably put, make some buttons as well in, incorporate that into mine, but we will see. Another thing that I'm going to be doing for my wedding is making my veil, and I just was reminded by that from my little clip that's here. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do my hair, which is part of the reason why it's driving me crazy right now, because it's getting longer than I like to have it, um, but I think that I want to have it a little bit long so that I can Maybe wear it half up and then have this with my veil attached to it, clipped in the back. And, oh, this is the fabric store that we went to. 
Sinon Castle, which is on Drakengarten in Stockholm. Um, and here is my veil fabric. I am using a silk, 100% silk chiffon for my veil, which is, I would say, not the most typical veil fabric. Um, a lot of times it's made out of tulle or English netting, I think it's called, silk netting. Um, but I'm going to be using this silk chiffon, which I think is just going to be really beautiful. So, and it's going to match with my dress well, but don't tell. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so this is going to be my veil fabric, and it's going to be really long, and I need to practice doing the rolled hem on this chiffon fabric. I think it'll be fine, but it's going to be a lot of hemming on this. Or doing the yeah, rolled edge. But I can't really do this until I get my dress back so that I know exactly how long I want the veil to be. And I'm actually going this afternoon to get my dress fitted again. Um, I've been a couple of times. And this afternoon I'm going, which will hopefully be kind of the second to last time, and then I'll go for the final, final time tomorrow, maybe twice. Um, because she's going on vacation on Saturday. And then once I have it finished, so once my dress is hemmed to the exact length that it's going to be, then I'm going to measure my distance from my hair, or where, I, where this is going to be clipped into my head, um, to where I want it to fall on my dress, and then I can cut the veil. So, I'm sure I will share some pictures of that once it's... I'm not going to share it before the wedding, but it will... Yeah, they'll be in my wedding pictures, so you'll see it sometime, probably. So, yeah. That is that project. So the other kind of stressful thing, I guess, is that... It's not really stressful, but... I sort of started, I'm starting to feel like I have no time left because I basically need to finish this dress for my friend really soon. We get back and then it's basically August and then she's leaving on August 11th and then we also go to her wedding and we'll be gone until like around the 20th or 22nd or something like that. And then it sort of feels like then it's almost the end of August and then I'm leaving on September 2nd for the US and then I have to have all the stuff ready and be taking it with me. So, and I'm not going to be doing sewing while I'm there because that will just be stressful and crazy. So I really need to have some of these things finished um, before then. So to add a little more to my plate, I am planning on making a uh, rehearsal dinner dress and possibly um, a dress that I'll wear. It might be the same one, I haven't decided yet, um, that I will wear for the day after or like some other kind of events that we have around the wedding um, or what I'll wear like when I leave the venue if I don't wear my uh, wedding dress. So I have from, I purchased some fabric from the Splendid Stitch which is a new to me fabric store in the UK and I got almost two meters of um, this uh, crepe fabric which is, it said that it was ivory, but I would definitely call this cream because my wedding dress is ivory and you can see a pretty big difference. This one is has definitely more of a yellowy color to it, but that's fine. I think especially for, I mean like if this was my wedding dress it would be a problem for me because this is, it's definitely more yellow. Um, but I think for like another event around the times, it will be perfect. Um, but it's like a nice sort of heavy, not heavy, but like it has a nice drape to it, fabric. And um, I have a couple ideas in mind for this. Either I'm going to make 
um, or some of the things I'm thinking about, is the Eliza Lex dress pattern from By Hand London fits me really well in the bodice, and that's what I made for the wedding that I'm attending in August and making the wedding dress for. Um, that's what I made my yellow um, sleeveless dress, if you remember that one. It's the Eliza Lex pattern and it has a fitted bodice with princess seams and it has kind of a tulip skirt to it. So I was thinking with this fabric I could also make um, a bodice with the Eliza Lex uh, dress pattern with probably sleeveless, but I don't know. Originally I was thinking not sleeveless, but yeah. I have a um, Ponte de Roma jersey, which is like a little bit thicker fabric, um, but it's stretchy, in also an off-white ivory color, which I might use that one to do one that to make a dress that has maybe three-quarter length sleeves or something, maybe for the night before when we're having sort of a barbecue in my parents' backyard, um, because it might be a little bit cooler and that could be just a little bit more casual fabric. And then this one could be for something else. And then maybe I would have this one um, strapless. Sleeveless, not strapless. Never strapless. Um, but yeah. So, okay. So if I make it with the Eliza Lex bodice with no sleeves, I would probably do a full or half circle skirt rather than the tulip skirt. Another option is to use the Anna dress by By Hand London bodice, but I haven't made that dress. I don't own that pattern yet, and I haven't made it, so that would mean that I have to print, buy the pattern, print it out, cut it out, paste it together, make a muslin. That seems like a lot, and maybe it's easier just to go with a pattern which already fits me. Yeah, I think that's... Right now, maybe I should just go with a pattern I know that fits me already, because then I can just start and cut it out and make it. I have this lining fabric, um, which might be a little bit stiff, but this is what I have. So, it's just like... So this is more what I would say is actually ivory, compared to this, which is like yellow. But I still like this color, so it's like not a problem, it's just... Um, not exactly what I expected. Um, I got a couple of other fabrics from the Splendid Stitch, and these will be for um, some other time when I have time. Maybe before I leave, but it will be, like maybe before I leave for the wedding, but it will definitely be one of the last things I do, if I do it at all. I have one meter of this lovely stripe jersey fabric, and I think I'll just make a top out of this. Um, I have made the plantain top, which is a free pattern from Deer and Doe, and I made it in a very lightweight jersey, which ended up being a little bit too lightweight, and I think I'll only wear it as a pajama top, but I will show that to you at some point if I remember, but I don't have it with me right now. But this is just like really nice, I don't know, I really like black and white stripes, and I really like it when they are not even. So. The black stripes are bigger than the white stripes. That's how I prefer it to be. Um, I could also make a Monet dress, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm like into wearing full stripe dress. I think I might just prefer it as a top. Now that I've like thrown this around, and you're probably getting seasick. Uh, by the way. Then I also got almost two meters, I think, of this gingham fabric, which is not something I would be drawn to in general, but I just really like it for some reason. And I looked at a couple pictures on Pinterest of um, gingham dresses and tops and skirts, and I thought I could make something out of this. So I got this, and it's really nice lightweight cotton wool, I think. I don't know how to say that, but I may use this for two separate projects. Um, 
I have a top that I'm going to make, maybe, and then I would just probably make a gathered skirt with a kind of wider waistband and a zipper. Um, I'll be right back. I got these two patterns from Deer and Dill, and one of the things that I'm considering with the gingham fabric is this top. And I would make the short sleeve version. And I would probably only put one pocket. Uh, and I would never button it all the way to the top. But there's some really nice, I've seen some really nice versions of this top and um, I don't like it in the, um, I don't like the picture on the pattern cover and I also don't particularly like the picture on the website. Uh, but I do, I have seen some really nice versions of it so. Um, thinking about making a top with this fabric and while I'm at it, I also got this coat pattern and I'm waiting patiently for my fabric to come for this. And that's definitely going to be an after the wedding project. I said it here. I also, from a Splendid Stitch, got some pink, light pink dot fabric. And I think I have about a meter of this. Um, not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this, but this could also be one of these tops. I don't know how you say this, because... Melilo? I don't know. I also got some fabric from Fabworks, which is an online UK fabric shop, and this is what I got, which is a 100% wool, wrinkly because I just washed it and it's been hanging in my shower to dry, um, but I got some of this, and I'm planning actually on just cutting this into a big square and fraying the edges after I stitch a little ways away from the edge and just like pulling out the fabric, the threads, and making the edges fray, if you know what I mean. Can't talk anymore. To make a really oversized sort of like blanket scarf uh, is my plan for that, which would I think be a really nice lightweight sort of alternative to a knitted scarf that could go super nicely with my coat. I'm really trying to be mindful when I'm purchasing fabric and thinking about what kind of fabrics do I actually wear and to try to create a handmade wardrobe and that's something that I really sort of struggle with because I'm most drawn to floral prints and I don't know lots of different patterns and in okay now I just showed you like four patterned fabrics but those are kind of like calm fabrics patterns but most of the time I wear solid colored things. This is my Blackwood cardigan. I think that's what it's called. And this is definitely my most worn handmade item ever. I would say. I love this cardigan so much and I've been really wanting to make um, another one. But I just haven't yet. And like this is something that I wait for it to be out of the wash, you know, it's like the first thing I wear out of the wash, and I want more of my handmade clothes to be like that. So I'm really going to try after the wedding, everything is kind of like post-wedding, I'm going to really try to think um, and plan out some key wardrobe items that I would like to make, because I find that it's, what happens, what ends up happening is that a season comes like the transition of a season happens and I sort of get to the point where it's like okay now suddenly it's cold or now it's suddenly warm and I have no clothes because I haven't been planning like making these clothes or planning exactly like what I, I haven't really been thinking about well what do I really want to wear so then I end up like one day just going out to somewhere like H&M or something and buying like a couple shirts and it's just not very satisfying and I would much rather have thoughtfully 
decided, even if it even if I don't have a 100% handmade wardrobe, I would like to be more thoughtful in the things that I do decide to buy and not just go to the store and like pick up a shirt. So, yeah. I'm going to work on that and I hope that an upcoming episode can kind of go through a little bit more of my process when I start thinking about how I'm going to um, work on kind of yeah, creating this handmade wardrobe. So I think that's it for now, um, it was a bit of a long update, but it's been a while and I'm not sure if I'll be back um, before the wedding and so then that will be not until October, but hopefully I will pop in and um, do an episode before then and I would like to get back on Instagram because um, I haven't been there in a while either. So. I hope to see you soon, and until then, happy knitting and happy sewing.